Welcome everyone to West Explained Best. Today we're doing the volume of cones, which is a Khan Academy exercise in this tutorial. Teach you all about cones, volume's not so bad, so let's get right into it. Find the volume of the cone, pretty straightforward, and it says we can leave it in terms of pi. Now, uh, I'm gonna quick give a summary of how do we find the volume of a cone? What does it mean, okay? So first I'm gonna draw like a little, whoops, that was bad. Okay, let's just erase this, start over. Okay, so first I'm gonna draw a cylinder, okay? Because so, that's the basis of a cone. So if you can imagine a cylinder would look like this, and that little tip of the cone would be in the middle of the top of that cylinder, it can, okay? Now, the formula for a cylinder is pi r squared h. It's essentially a prism, a circular prism, so that is the volume for a cylinder, okay? Volume for a cylinder. Now, Pi r squared, you'll recognize that. That is the area of the base, just like our, our prism formulas. That's the area of the base. And then the height, obviously, is the height of the prism, the distance between the two bases, okay? That's very important. The height is the distance between the two bases. Now, the formula is exactly the same as this for, for a cone, okay, for a cone, except that it's divided by three, or another way to think of it is pi r squared times h times one third. I usually like the times one third, but that's your formula. It's just one third of the volume, which I think is pretty cool, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna identify the components we're looking for. We have the radius right here, that's three. So radius squared, three squared. We have our height, our height is four. Okay, height of four, and then we just can apply the other parts. And we're gonna leave it in terms of pi, so we're gonna handle that last. Anytime it says in terms of pi, you wanna just kind of leave that guy for the very last thing, okay? Now, we're gonna square, let's go all blue for, leave the pi, okay, just jot him down. I have three squared, nine times four times one third. I like to not just go left to right, but I like to be strategic, so I'm gonna multiply the one third times the nine, okay? Anytime I have one third, I'm gonna look for something that can be evenly divisible by nine, or sorry, by three, and that's nine. So I get three from that result times four. So now my answer is gonna be 12 pi units cubed, cubic units for volume, and that's my answer. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna type in 12 pi, and it's already in units cubed, check it. Ready to go on. Okay, uh, enter, either enter an exact answer in terms of pi, or use 3.14, four pi same thing okay uh i'm surprised it gives us such an easy so we have our radius here we have our height here um and we're ready to apply our formula now one thing i will note when you're talking about sur uh, surface area you'll want this measurement right here which is called the slant height that's only for surface area though so that's the slant height you don't need it for volume you only care about that green height that i've already highlighted Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and apply our formula. We're gonna use blue again. Volume equals one third pi r squared times h. So we have one third. I wrote it a little bit differently. I think this is traditionally how you see it. Pi, and we're gonna write 10 squared times six. So I'm gonna go all blue for solving. One third pi times 100 times six. Let's be strategic here. One third time what? times what? Do I wanna multiply it by 100 or six? Hopefully you said six because we know that six is divisible by three and you get two times pi. I don't know why I put the pi in the middle, whatever. Times 100, we get 200 pi as our answer and that's what I'm gonna punch in. Boom, 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 boom. There, I turned up the volume. I don't know if you if you noticed I did that. Um, find the volume of the cone. Enter an exact answer in terms of pi or 3.14. So. Let's highlight what we need. Here's our radius. Here's our height again. Um, if it gave us the slant height and the the radius, we could easily find the height by using Pythagorean theorem. Just so you know, if in case you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? That's what you do. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, translate. So we have one third times pi times our radius five squared times five. Okay. So we have one third times pi times twenty five times five. That's one third pi times 125. And we can leave it in terms of pi, so I'm gonna leave it as a fraction. 125 
is not divisible by 3, so I'm going to go 125 over 3 times pi. And I'm going to put the pi in the numerator, actually, 125 pi over 3. I always like putting either the variable or uh, pi in the numerator. It, I, it's just a better way to go. 125 pi over 3. If I can tap it. Hmm. There we go. 3. Next question. And enter an exact answer. It's the same thing. So this is a pretty basic one. Okay, just so, oops. I was using red for my radius. Radius red. Height green. Well, that one doesn't have alliteration. But we have volume equals one third pi seven squared times seven. Oh, that's going to be seven cubed. Seven times itself three times. I believe that's 343. It is 343. And I don't think that's divisible by three because the numer the digits of 343 are not divisible. The sum of the digits of 343 are not divisible by three. It's 10, 10 is not divisible by three, so we just gotta leave it like that. Fraction three, four, three. I thought I hit a four. Three, four, three pi divided by three, check it. All right, and that's it. That's all there is to a volume of cones, pretty easy. Check out some of my other volume and surface area Khan Academy tutorials. I also do notes on it. I do CUDA worksheet tutorials, lots available. Thank you so much for stopping by and make sure to join me next time on West Explains Best.